to see a lot more of this man over this season. And Jan is through. The man foremost in Stuart Lancaster's mind. The opposition kicked the ball over my head. The first thing we're looking to do is gather the ball as quickly as I can. So I'm going back, gather it. As I'm tracking back, I look over to see if there's a full back there. If there's someone else to help me out, maybe there might be a bit more space over there. If there's no one there, then I'll try to use a bit of footwork and try to create a bit of space for me to kick the ball down the line. Wait, wait. So quite often in a defensive situation, as a winger, you get to you find yourselves in a, in a two and one situation. And that's the best way to do it is sort of use the touchline as a, an extra defender and an advantage for you. So but in this scenario, if this is the fullback and this is the winger, I'll try to stay on his inside and as square as I can. You don't want to get on the outside shoulder of the opposition, because that just gives him an easy soft shoulder on the inside. So predominantly you want to make sure you stay on the inside of him. And as he comes along, I'll stay shifted, make sure I'm keeping connected with the guy inside me, so my centre, make sure I'm talking to him so he's, he's covering my inside. And as I go up towards the ball and he passes it on, I just shift along, give him the edge, use the touchline as my friend, and uh, yeah, make the tackle. So I've got the ball in a broken field scenario. I'm coming up, I'm trying to isolate one of the defenders. So obviously I've got the guy ahead of me. I'll try to use my footwork to get on the outside of him. So I can use quickly footwork, get on the outside, try to get on the outside of him. If he gets too close to me, then I've got the fend. I can also look for the offload. At the end of the day, I'm the one with the ball in hand, so I decide what he does and how well I can do it. When I'm attacking the defender, I look at his hips. His hips are facing with the touchline. So at this stage now, I'm going to look, probably look to get a right foot step, get on an easy shoulder, because he's going to be off balance coming across. And at this stage, I hopefully go for the, for the inside of him, or at least get a dominant carry. So side steps. I've seen a few of those. They start off in front of me and then they go past me. <laughs> so I'm not best suited to explain how it's done. You, Austin, I hate to say it, we're pretty good at them. Well, actually, Molyneux made some really good points there. And, Peza, you've played at the back, the last line of defence, so you know how to stop side steps. You've seen some. Uh, what makes and constitutes a really good side step? I think it's a, a player who gets their feet very close um, and, and goes late. Because I think as a fullback, it's really good. You want to track a player, and if you can get them, corner flag them, then you can nail them. But a player who almost stands you up, so kind of look into his eyes, he's got quick feet, you think he's going one way, and then he steps the other into the space. Yeah. I think just keeping a defender aware of where the space is, because as a fullback, you want to have that control in that area. I think that's the key, really. So kids watching at home who think they'll get in the garden and they'll practice their sidestep, you know, it's like this, one side to the other, or they drop the shoulder. It's not really those pre-contrived moves that really run a sidestep. It's what you see in your eyes. You look at the defender, and you want the defender to go somewhere. You might move your eyes somewhere, and you might use some different feet. And that's it. It's different for different defenders. If we bring Ben in, who wasn't a very good defender... Oh. And... <laughs> <laughs> you see, Pez has said there, the difference is, if Pez is at fullback, I'll attack this completely different. But because Ben's there, I want to make him sit his heels down. Once I know I've got his heels down, he then can't really get a decent angle, can he, Ben? No. No. So, uh, as a result, I mean, you want to keep going forward as the big defender. You don't want to give that opportunity. You want to keep the momentum on. Um, but, yeah, the last thing you want to do is sit back on your heels. Yeah, and differently, if Pez is there at full-back and he's in the channel, like Pez has said, if I step him early, he'll still get me onto an angle and then he owns the contact situation. <laughs> not, not, quite, not quite like that. He still owns it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the defence from the inside. This is just a one-on-one, -on -one, Ben. You've got used to that. Because um, you're ugly. So, basically... <laughs> It's about really getting up tight to him and then trying to beat him right at the last minute. I suppose we, we can talk about it all day, but it's about the eyes, it's about looking at the core of the defender, moving his hips around and then just beating him and doing it. I suppose we should just demonstrate with a few examples. We've got five uh, able... We've got five bodies uh, <laughs> who are going to try and take us on one-on-one, -on -one, one at a time. Uh, I'll go first. I'll give Mike his own chance to get his own back. So, Mike, basically, you've just got to beat me in this channel. Everything we've just coached you, this could get you into the first team, mate. Straight Off over the top. Straight okay. over the top. Yeah, it's not bad. His foot was in the air, but he didn't really step me with any that line. If you step sideways too much, it's easy for a defender because he'll keep coming forward. As you step, you've got to keep going forward. Pezzi, you come in and defend, and you could take one of the big guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Again, uh, interesting really sidestep. He, um, he just changed direction. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, I'll, we'll have another go at a big guy. Now, this is another one for a small guy, because if, if I'm defending and a big guy comes towards me like this, 
I know full well there's only one place he wants to go, and that's <laughs> pretty much straight over my head. But you can con him as a defender there. The old Samoan sidestep, you can look like you're dipping as he comes in. You can look like you're dipping, and then you just stand back out the tackle and <laughs> sweep his legs away and pull his face into the ground. But again, you're a big guy. Try and do a sidestep. This is what we do in rugby in the back, so have a go at it. <laughs> Here we go, here's his sidestep, take the space, that's pretty good, oh, and the fend. Oh, 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 oh. That's nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. And again, we'll see all different sides, if you have one go as well. Against Matt Perry, the most capped England fullback of all time. See if he can beat him, he was the last line of defence. Terrible attacker, brilliant defender. <laughs> see what I mean? So the difference is, we'll have a go at Pez to finish off. And it's all about the footwork, the eyes. Watch the eyes, they're the most important thing when you're doing a sidestep. Are you going to come in and try and swipe no, me no, out the I'm way? No, I'm not. I'm saying hurry up. OK, I'll hurry up. So, you type, move it with your eyes, and then just beat him on the outside for pace and skill and talent. Chris, <laughs> who, uh, who do you think was the best of that? Jason Robinson, without doubt, the best one-on-one -on -one defender beater that's probably ever played the game.